We covered static properties and methods in lesson 2.7, but we haven't talked about using them with inheritance. Let's get into that, and if you've heard the term late static binding but sounded confusing or it didn't make sense, stick around and watch this lesson because I hope to make that clearer by the end of this video. To better understand what late static binding is and how it works, we need to first understand what the problem is and what problem it solves. There are two types of bindings, early binding which happens at compile time and late binding which happens at runtime. And yes, PHP gets compiled on demand and even though it is abstracted away from us, it is still there. Let's see examples so it makes more sense. I have two classes right here. I have class A and class B. On the class A, I have a property called name with the value A. I have a single method get name which simply returns that property and class B simply extends class A and overrides the name property with the value B. And then on the index.php, I'm instantiating both of those classes and printing out the name properties. So let's run the code and make sure that this works. And it does, it prints A and B, which is expected, right? Because on the first case, we have an object, which is an instance of class A, and therefore it prints A because the property value is set to A. And in the second case, we have an object of class B, which overrides the property with the value of B. This is late binding, where the class is resolved at runtime using the runtime information. As you know, the this variable right here refers to the calling object. And in the case of the second object here, this refers to the class B. The method calls here will depend on the type of the object that we're calling that method on. So in the case of class A, we're calling that method on class A. And in the case of class B, we're calling that method on the class B. And because we're inheriting class A in class B, it just calls that method on class A, but the, this variable still refers to the calling object, which is class B. So this class and method resolving and binding happens at runtime because it needs that additional runtime information to figure out on which class to call the method and on which class to access the certain properties and constants and so on. This is basically what late binding is. To prove this, we can simply go to class A and var dump the class of the, this object and let's see what we get. Let's run the code and we see that first time it's set to class A and the second time it's set to class B because we're calling the method on the object of class B right here. Let's make the property and method static and try to call the method statically from both class A and class B. So I'm going to change this to static and same thing on class B. And we need to change this method to static as well. And as you know, we cannot use this within the static context. We could use the self keyword instead. So I'm going to change this to self and let's get rid of that. And on the index.php, I'm simply going to comment these out and let's call the method statically directly on the class. Let's do the same thing for class B and let's run the code and we get AA, which is the value from class A. And this is the problem, right? Because the expected output was AB. That's what it was printing before when we were using the this variable. But in the case when we use the self keyword, it's printing AA. This is early binding. Each time this line of code runs here, it will reference the same class. It resolves the class at compile time. This is also the limitation of the self keyword. Unlike this variable, self keyword does not follow the same inheritance rules and it resolves the class to which the method belongs to or where it was defined. So we can var dump here self class to see what the class is. So if I run the code again, we see that in both cases, it's printing class A, where previously when we did get class on the this object, it was printing class B on the second one because we were calling the method on the object of class B. But in this case, even though we're calling the method on class B directly, it still resolves to class A when using the self keyword. This is the problem that late static binding solves, which we'll talk about in a minute. One way to solve this is to to overwrite the method in the child class and print self name there. So if we go to class B, we could simply overwrite the get name method here and simply return self name. Now, if we run the code, we see that now it's returning a B, which is expected. But this is not ideal because it defeats the purpose of inheritance, right? We don't want to keep on overwriting the methods this way. We want to have the base class and base functionality that can be inherited into the child classes. So this is not a great solution. 
in old school PHP before the proper solution was added, a function called get called class was used to figure out which is the calling class and then forward the static calls to that. So if we var dump this right here instead of the self class and we run the code, we see that it's giving us class A for the first time and it's giving us class B for the second time. So developers used to use this function to figure out which was the calling class and then they would forward the calls to that class. But then in PHP 5.3, a better solution was introduced called late static binding, where the class is resolved using late binding at runtime instead of early binding at compile time. Instead of adding a new keyword, PHP maintainers decided to use an already existing reserved keyword called static that could be used with the scope resolution operator to access static properties and constants and call static methods using late static binding. So we can replace self keyword here with the static keyword and let's clear this out and run the code again and we're getting a b which is the expected output late static binding basically uses runtime information to determine how to call the method or how to access the property or the constant and the way this works is that when the method is called right here php stores the original class name of the last non-forwarding call and then when it encounters the static keyword it resolves to the original class that it had stored before i mentioned non-forwarding call and the example of non-forwarding in call is this when you directly specify the class name and it's usually before the scope resolution operator. However, when you use keywords like self and parent to access properties or call methods, those are called forwarding calls because it might forward the call to the parent class. You could also use static keyword in a non-static context. This is the static context here, right? Because we are calling this method statically. However, you could also use the static keyword when you are in a non-static context, for example, in this case where we have the object and we're calling the methods on the object. The difference is that, as I mentioned before, in the static context, the class name is explicitly specified on the left side of the scope resolution operator, and that's the class name that gets stored by PHP and then used at runtime when static keyword is encountered but in the context of objects when we're not within static calls so if we do something like this it will resolve to the class of the calling object so if we go back to get name and we change this to be non-static and we run the code everything still works it prints a and b so now you might be saying why can't you simply just use this variable here and why do you need the static keyword the answer to that is first of all we cannot use this variable here because we're working with the static properties but if even if we were not working with the static properties, the difference between the static and this variable in a non-static context is that if you call the method using the this variable, it could call a private method from the same scope while using static could result in a different method call. And another difference is that you cannot use static keyword to access non-static properties. The same rules apply to constants. You could use static keyword to use late static binding to access overridden constants as well. Before we wrap up this video, I want to mention that as of PHP 8, you can also use the static keyword as a return type. You could already use the self or parent as return types before, but since PHP 8, you could also use the static keyword. This can be useful when you're creating a new instance using the static keyword and returning that, for example, to implement something like a factory pattern. Let's do an example quick. Let's say that we had a public static function make here that simply returned the new object of class A. One one way we would do this would be return new class A, right? And this is fine, but in the case of class B, this would not be fine. If we go to index.php and let's comment this out, let's simply var dump class a make and see what we get we run the code and we get an object of a which is fine let's call that on class b and run the code and we're still getting the object of class a that's because we're being explicit right here we're returning a new object of class a if we return the new object of class b for example when we run the code this would return an object of class b instead of being specific you could also do new self right or you could do new parent if you were in a child class and that would also work but again this would result in the same problem. If I run the code, we're still going to get the object of class A even when we're calling the make method on class B. To solve that problem is to use static keyword and when we run the code, now it returns an object of B. So what was added in PHP is that in the return type, you were before able to specify self, but as you know, self would always resolve to class A. But since PHP 8, now you could specify static and now this will match the actual returned class type. 
type. So if we run the code, everything still works. And if we change this back to class A and run the code, it returns the object of class A. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.